Bienvenidos and welcome to Inside the UPSL on TV Emacs and on TVEmacs.com. You can also find us on all social media platforms that is on Twitter, Instagram, and even on Facebook. That is at UPSL Soccer. I am Alex Naveja, and alongside with me tonight is Dennis Pope and RF Takari. And we are here every Thursday to bring you, the fans, players, and the coaches, every in-depth news of the fastest growing pro development soccer league, the UPSL. Take a look at the top three stories in lower division soccer. First off, the Italian great Alessandro Del Piero announces co-ownership of LA10 FC. Is this great news or what? This is fantastic news for the UPSL. Obviously, to have a player of his caliber and his uh, resume be a part of the UPSL says so many things about the league and LA10 FC. But Alessandro Del Piero brings a special something um, that most you know former players don't bring: World Cup experience. You know a. a national hero that sort of thing doesn't just happen for the UPSL so I think for Del Piero to come in to announce his partnership with LA 10 um, it is just going to reap benefits for both the league and the team right Art? Absolutely I mean <clears throat> Del Piero is such a huge name for people who follow Serie A I mean he made over 500 appearances for Juventus and now mm -hmm. when I look back at the kit for LA 10 FC, yes, I definitely see the resemblance for sure with the black and white stripes. Mm -hmm. So we're expecting some nice unis coming their way. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, I would say so. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to it for the next coming season, I would say. Now the next move, Cal United just recently tweeted out that they're going to be out of the NPSL Founders Cup and the NPSL regular. Why do you guys think this happened? It's, it's tough to say, but I mean, before getting into the, you know, wondering what happened, I mean, yeah, they're Cal United. Maybe we should call them Cal Undecided. I mean, <laughs> they were in, I remember seeing the schedule. I mean, the schedule was set. I mean, it, you basically said, okay, you know, it's going to be some exciting matchups where they were going to be playing. They were going to be, you know, they were one of the original members of the NPSL Founders Cup, and yeah, now they're out. So, guess, the, you know, what's the reason why? I mean, you could always say my guess is as better as my guess is just as good as everyone else's, but maybe they're looking into another league. And you know, like I said, my my you know new name for them, I think it's a I think it's, I think it's a good one. Did you work hard on that? Um, I actually didn't work that hard. Just came to me earlier in the day. Just it just came to me. You know, other times we we've, we've done this show, something came to me after the show, and I was like really upset. <laughs> but this time, you know, it came at the right time. He had a chance to redeem himself right yeah. here. So uh, there is a, co a lot of controversy around this announcement. It was very brief. They actually put up an announcement on Twitter and took that one down, and then reposted a, a more formal announcement. And a See, lot of undecided, right? And, and a lot of confusion and, and consternation around the lower divisions about why and you know, for what reason they would do this sort of thing. Um, Cal United has a long history already to this point. They've made so many moves. Uh, in the last two to three years already that I think everyone sort of expects something else to sort of the other shoe to finally drop here um, and so news will eventually break they'll finally make the announcement about what they have planned next but they do plan on, on making a move um, and it will it will happen soon so we should look forward to that well speaking of Cal United and moves the UPSL just announced the fall MVP and it just so happens to be Abraham Vion from Cal United FC so congratulations to Cal United and to Abraham Vion. So, what are you guys' thoughts? Is this the right pick for the MVP? Did you guys somebody have somebody else in mind, or do you think they were pretty spot on? Down the stretch for for Cal United, he was the man. Um, big goals and big games for them. He scored the only goal in the Western Conference Final against Jaza Redwood City to get them um, to the West Final, and then eventually, of course, to the national championship. Uh, just a major factor in their season. Really stepped up his play for them. I've always liked what I've seen from Abraham Villon. You know, he's played at high levels for teams like Oklahoma City Energy, you know, Ventura County Fusion. He's also been capped before for the United States at the U18 level. Great player. He's tough to mark. Mm -hmm. 
Well, there you have it, guys. That's off the top. But we're going to take our first break here in Inside the UPSL. But when we come back, we're going to have the GM of Juliet United SC and UPSL Women's Division Midwest Conference Manager Ulises Ornelas joining us here on the show. You don't want to miss out on this. And don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms. That is Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook. That is at UPSL Soccer. And welcome back to Inside the UPSL, presented by TV Emacs. And now we welcome in our guest, Ulises Ornelas, the GM of Julia United SC and the UPSL's Women Division Midwestern Conference Manager. Ulises, thank you for being on the show. How are you doing tonight? I'm uh, very good, very good. Thank you for having me tonight. Thank you. No problem, Ulises. Uh, we just want to ask, uh, so far, how are pre preparations going for the spring season? Good, good. We're very excited to begin the, the season. Uh, we're preparing uh, with our staff for our men's team and our women's team. Uh, we're making sure everything is ready to, to start the season in, in April. So what are some of the goals that you're looking forward to for both the men's and the women's team? Uh, for players, we're, we're very excited to have some uh, returning players with, uh, with the men's team. Um, however, we are we have a new coaching staff for the men and the women, so um, it's going to be a lot up to them to see what players stay and a lot of the new recruits that we're going to be getting. So uh, we're very really excited to confront this season. Uh, last year was our first season in the UPSL. Uh, we learned a lot, very competitive league. So now we're uh, we're preparing even stronger to to make sure we're in the top places uh, for the league. Who are the names on the on those coaching staffs? Uh, what was that? Who are some of those names on those coaching staffs for the men's and women's teams? Yes, yes. For the coaching staff, uh, we have a, a very uh, experienced coach. Um, he goes by Profe Sanchez, and he's a very well-known well -known coach here in the Chicagoland area, and we were able to um, hire him here to our to our league, uh, to our team, sorry. So uh, we're very excited. Uh, he's also going to be helping us out with the women, as we're going to be beginning the new the new season. He's going to be giving us advice. Um, but definitely with the men, uh, we're very excited to have someone as experienced as him. Uh, with him, he's bringing three staff members that he knows uh, to take care of different parts of the game. And um, we're very excited to, to begin. What are some of the things that you guys learned last season that you're taking into this new season? Uh, one of the things that we, we definitely learned uh, from last season uh, was definitely having um, an experienced coach. Uh, last year we had a coach who, who did a good job, um, but um, we didn't know the level of the league. Um, as soon as we went into some games, uh, we found out that we, um, we needed somebody more experienced. So um, we prepared much better because everything starts with the coach. And um, we made sure we hired someone that was ready to uh, confront these challenges, confront these uh, very competitive teams, and uh, to make sure we were up there in the, in the league. What are some of the expectations that you have for the teams this year? Uh, for our team or the teams in general? I would say for your team. Oh, for our team? Uh, for for this, this year, we're, we're preparing with everything. And, and by that I mean uh, we're bringing in a, a professional staff, we're bringing in an experienced coach. Um, they're well connected with players around the area and as well from uh, outside. So our, our expectations is to, uh, to win um, our conference first and then go to the national uh, championship. So uh, we're preparing a lot. We started preparing right after our season was over last year. So. Um, like we mentioned last year, was a lot of uh, learning how the, what the league was about, and what they told us was true. It's a very, very competitive league, and you need to have your best. You need to have your best in this league in order to compete, and every game is is important. Go for it. Milwaukee Bavarian is the champion. They are from the Midwest Conference. Tell us about what you see that makes them successful. Um. Well, we know the Bavarians uh, uh, really well. Um, they invited us to a tournament last year, 
and the tournament they invited us, um, we were received really well. Um, but we you know we quickly found out that they were a top contender team, and uh, from what I, what I've talked with uh, the owner, you know, he has they have a lot of history here in the area, and uh, but not only history but uh, successful winning history. So um, they're definitely a great team, well directed, well coached, great players, and uh, that's definitely someone that that um, that we're preparing to to face. You know, because we're preparing to to be one of those top teams and we know that eventually we're going to be going against uh, the Bavarians and uh, they're definitely, I mean, they won the national championship, right? So, <laughs> I mean, they must be doing something good. Are you looking to possibly just try to like be keep up with Bavarian and try to try to take them off of their, you know, coming off of that championship title last year? You're looking to take them off of that? Um, to, to be honest, uh, like I mentioned, we're, we're competing to win. You know, we're, we're preparing to win. We're, um, like I mentioned, we have the, the, we're getting the right people at the right places in order to, to win, you know, and eventually we know we're going to have to face uh, Bavarians. Um, Audrey is a really good team as well. Um, but, you know, the Bavarians are there. They, you know, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best, and right now they're the best. So, uh, yes, yeah, so we are preparing to eventually uh, challenge them. Now, Ulysses, you recently were named Midwest Conference Manager of the UPSL Women's Division. Tell us about what you like about that role and why you made that decision. Uh, I made the decision. I've been in contact uh, with Jan, uh, with yourself, Dennis, you know, and uh, I'm, re I'm really passionate about the game. Uh, really passionate to see the, um, um, the area grow of soccer, especially for women in this area, because there is a lot of talent. And unfortunately, there's not enough teams to um, showcase these, these girls that have an amazing talent. So, um, you know, when I was invited and accepted the position here was uh, to make sure the um, to make sure to form a competitive league and to make sure these these women that are here in the area, um, you know, they're showcased. They're now uh, they're playing at a high level and they're maintaining themselves fit for whether university, whether to go pro. Um, so it was something that we needed here in the area, and, you know, it connected. The UPSL was, is growing, and they wanted something here in the Midwest region, so um, I stepped up, and uh, and thankfully, uh, this league we will begin, and that's something very, very important that we've been working with because I believe we started the project maybe two months ago or so, and it, we're very happy to announce that we are going to have a league uh, for this season coming up. Final question, Ulysses. Uh, what are some of the adjustments that you're going to have to make this year from playing last year in the UPSL? Uh, for the men's or for the in general for the club? Just in general for the club. Uh, some adjustments are uh, definitely increasing our, our staff. Um, last year, I mean, uh, uh, one thing, we, we also have uh, youth categories here in our club. So definitely having a team in the UPSL with the men, um, a lot of our staff was, um, you could say, all over the place. We were taking care of the men, taking care of the, the kids. And one thing we learned is that, you know, we can't be everywhere. Mm -hmm. So one thing for sure that we're, we're increasing is our staff, our personnel. And, not, you know, not just increasing the numbers, but quality. We're making sure we have quality. So um, whoever we have at these different uh, places, um, we're, we're there to compete and uh, play, our, play our best. Mm -hmm. Ulysses, thank you so much for being on the show. It was a pleasure having you tonight, and thank you for stopping by. No, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to leave off with the note that uh, the UPSL is growing. Um, it's, it's a sensation right now here in the Midwest, and we're happy to be here. Well, thank you so much for your time, Ulysses. And that was Ulysses, the GM of the Joliet United SC and the UPSL Women's Division Midwest Conference Manager. And with that, we're going to take a quick break and hear from our sponsors. Football clubs, teams, and federations. Users can easily find all the content organized in sections directly on the website, which they can access for free. Each federation and club can have a branded portal with all the competitions streamed live or on demand. 
Matches are shown in the club's TV channels and the archive of previous events and highlights can be found here at any time. We offer several broadcasting options, among others, option 1, a regular HD corder tripod and an encoding device, option 2, a smartphone with an HD camera and a 4G or Wi-Fi connection. In addition, as a channel operator you can access our live studio from any laptop or tablet and embellish the live events with web-based graphics including a scoreboard, timer, lineups, match info and our revolutionary e-send replays and automatic highlights. Users have the power to watch their favorite team in HD and personalize the platform by using live video options that enable a series of interactive features such as the real-time highlights, which can be enjoyed live and on demand. With MyKujo, your content is not only available on your channel, but it's everywhere you want it to be. Thanks to our sophisticated embedding options, in fact, channel owners can share their live or on-demand videos on different web spaces. This includes websites and Facebook pages. Finally, with increased visibility, we enhance your monetization options, video ads, sponsor, and a personalized player and other opportunities will increase your revenue. Welcome back to Inside the UPSL, presented by TV Emacs. And it's that time to put on the tunes as we swing our way to the UPSL East Coast Swing. And first stop on our list, we're going to go to the northeast part. But looks like there's news brewing up in Pennsylvania. AFC Lancaster Lions recently just joined in in the league. Can you give us a little bit of background info? Sure. Uh, they're a team, a, a local team there in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, that's been uh, a quality pro development team there in the last several years. Um, they had decided to make a switch to another league earlier in the year. And after seeing how that was going, they decided to make the jump into the UPSL instead. And so I spoke to their ownership group a couple weeks ago. Um, and, and they're, they're looking like they're going to be a real competitive team there in the Northeast, for sure. What about you, Art? Yeah, definitely great for the league. I mean, they were playing in the American Soccer League, and it's a league that's, you know, had some clout in that area of the Northeast. I mean, it's not just all the teams bunched up in one area. It's kind of spread out a bit. But from what I've, you know, from the homework I've done on that mm -hmm. league, yeah, they've had some very uh, competitive teams. And... To see them come to the UPSL is huge. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to make our way towards Florida. And is the Pro Premier Florida Central Division the league's best division? It may be in the UPSL this coming spring season. It's just loaded with really, really good teams. Uh, Tropics has come in. Uh, St. Petersburg Aztecs is playing there. America Soccer Club, which was a U.S. Open Cup qualifier. Uh, it's just a lot of really quality, talented teams there. I think that that'll be a, definitely... A, a division that will probably produce a playoff team out of Florida um, and will just be a, a really strong 15 team division that will be a one table division every team will play each other once it'll be a real uh, competitive you know sort of setup that they have there in Central Florida there's they have pro rel there and so they do have a second division there but this top division has a lot of quality to it so we're gonna go ahead and shift our way to the southeast side and the spring season league is just about to kick off. Any expectations with this kickoff, Art? I mean, when it comes to expectations, I mean, a team in this region that I've, you know, normally been a fan of just because I love the name of their team, you know, Soda City. You know, I'll be keeping tabs on them. I think they're going to be one of the teams to watch. But there's so many other, there's other good teams, you know, that you got to pay attention to, like Charleston United, even Low Country United. So, you know, th there's a lot of competition there as well. And, of course, Dennis Pope, you know, knows a lot about the Southeast. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the big thing will be the Charleston Derby between Charleston United and Low Country to see how that manifests and how that plays out throughout the season. That's probably the number one storyline there, but there's going to be so many good teams there. There's been a lot of expansion there in North Carolina, and so there's a lot of interest to see how that works out as well. Mm -hmm. Now let's shift our attention towards the Midwest. Uh, things are starting to get a little cold, but there's been things warmer coming in for Union Dubuque coming in and being featured recently by the protagonist.com. That's right. Uh, protagonist does a really great job covering the UPSL, um, and they've recently written a feature about Union Dubuque and their ownership. Um, they'll be participating in their second UPS here this spring. Um, and so they're, they're looking to make some changes and, and make some improvements. And the protagonist article does a good job of outlaying what they're looking at. 
So we're going to shift our attention to Texas now, our final stop in the East Coast swing. But the North Texas Legend FC enters as an expansion team in the UPSL Championship North Division. Thoughts on the move, Art? Yeah, it's a, it's a good move. And we know in Texas there are a lot of quality teams. And for North Texas Legends, or it was less, you know, we could just call them NTX Legends FC, right? And, you know, their coach is Brandon Martin. You know, he has a lot of experience as a coach. A lot of experience with player development, and he's even coached uh, for you know FC Dallas at the academy level. And you know this is a I think this is a big name um, for 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 uh, North Texas Legends, and I think Brandon Martin you know is the right is definitely the right choice you know to be coaching this club. And they joined the the UPSL Championship second tier there in Texas, so they'll be working their way through the promotion relegation setup there as well. It's an exciting thing that they have going on in Texas. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, gentlemen, this is going to be the end of the song here in the East Coast Swing. But after we come back from break, we're going to go ahead and say what's up to the West Coast. What's up? And welcome back to Inside the UPSL, presented by TV Max. As we just finished up with the East, now we're going to go ahead and say what's up to the West Coast. What's up? And see what's up here in the west coast we're going to make our first stop to the pacific northwest as rumors and the wind has been swirling around in alaska there's been rumors also saying that there's gonna be new clubs joining alaska yeah uh there should be some more teams joining it here in the next couple of weeks um the recent additions of Teams like Cook Inlet have started to build a groundswell there. People are seeing that teams are joining, and we're beginning to hear from teams saying that they're interested and they want to find out more. And then Washington, uh, still, that's a bubble that's yet to burst for the UPSL, but the, the, all signs point to yes to UPSL eventually in Washington. It's just going to take that, that first interested group of teams. I think that's right around the corner. So we're gonna go ahead and move our way to Colorado and Colorado just continuing to show signs of them being so versatile in the soccer league. What's going on there in Colorado, Art? Tell me. Well, based on some of the news, you know, things have been a little volatile, I, I guess. I mean, there's been, you know, some drama. You know, there's a, there's, I'm sure there's things that can be read not always the best news but um you know from i guess we gotta wait and see how things are gonna go i mean i think maybe it's kind of a mystery right now um dennis well, what's what's the word uh there's two new leagues that have popped up there in colorado colorado's always been its own um island when it comes to pro development soccer the upsl um has made an effort to try and, and bring colorado in and had some success out early on in 2016 uh, but they continue to show that they want to do things their own way. And so now they've, they've, some of those teams have now created leagues of their own and they're trying to get things going because they don't like the Colorado Premier League or some of the other situations that they have going on there. And so until they figure themselves out, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But the UPSL should have um, some, some action there this spring. It just depend, remains to be seen at what level and uh, what commitment the teams have. So now in the southwest side, we've been seeing some big seasons for this big seven-team conference. What's making them so big and making it so more newsworthy? Well, geographically, the southwest has blown up. It's gone from just a, a Phoenix, sort of Las Vegas-ish conference to now it includes teams in Waco and El Paso and different places in, t in the west side of Texas that's kind of grown this conference and made this conference expand quite a bit. And with that, you're finding clubs in that West Texas area who have established themselves and now are finding their pace and their level here in the UPSL. So you're going to see those teams compete for dominance in the Southwest for, for, with teams like Sporting AZ. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to move our way to NorCal. And there's already been splash that there's been four great games going on already. What happened in these games, Art? Right. Well, the game that took place on March the 2nd, you know, AFC Hearts, they got a 2-1 win, a huge 2-1 win over Oakland Stompers, you know, then Pajaro Valley, you know, a, a exciting 3-2 win over Real San Jose, mm -hmm. and then, you know, Vacaville Elite defeated Chico City Rangers 2-1, you know, I got a pool for the Chico City Rangers, I mean, that's where I, you know, that's where I got my degree in history, you know, that's where I went to college, you know, um, it was a very good uh, educational experience, and, you know, I'm just going to move past that. And San Leandro United, 3-1 win over 
Jaza, Redwood City. I always like saying the name of that team. And I think that's the most surprising score of the bunch so far as San Leandro getting that win against Jaza. Jaza was uh, the Wild West Conference champion in the fall season. They were a U.S. Open Cup participant, and so that's a big win for San Leandro. And then Pajaro Valley, an expansion team, to come up and bite Real San Jose, which is among the most established teams there in the Wild West, is also quite a surprise. Mm -hmm. A lot of things brewing up, not just in NorCal, but also in SoCal as the Alta California Sol have a 3-0 and star. And they haven't had too much time here in the UPSL. So just imagine what's to come for them. How are they 3-0? and Just, you know, being young with the UPSL, yeah. haven't been too much time there. Yeah, they're really great energy coming into the league, really fast start. Um, you know, the, their ownership group is already committed to the youth side there in Santa Barbara, and so they already have um, a real strong foundation there in the community. And I think everybody's excited about the prospect of the men's team, and then eventually they're going to build a women's team as well. So it's a, it's a groundswell there that's grown from the little kids playing in this club to now they're becoming adults, and now they're starting to, to, to continue and, and build the thing itself. So it's a real strong, strong community they have with, there with Alta California Soul. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts? Or that you'd probably try to help out. Like, why, how are they 3-0? and Well, for one, I mean, they're fighting the back of the net. 15 goals. They've only conceded two. A positive 13 goal difference. I mean, they're on fire right now, and they look really, really tough to beat. Yeah, 15 goals in three games, right? That's pretty outstanding, no matter how you slice it. Mm -hmm. Looking pretty solid offensively. As we just said, what's up with the hottest and latest news here in the West Coast of the UPSL? But we're going to go ahead and take another break here in Inside the UPSL. But when we come back, we're going to have Omar Avalos joining us in the show to give us a little bit on the news on the SoCal News on the UPSL. And welcome back to Inside the UPSL, presented by TV Emacs. As we welcome in our second guest of the show, it is Omar Avalos. Omar, how are you doing tonight? Welcome to the show. Good, thanks again for having me. Omar, we're here to bring you to talk about some SoCal soccer. First thing we want to know is, what teams are looking good so far this spring? Well, uh, we're seeing after three games in the SoCal championship divisions, uh, some Good stuff from uh, Alta California Seoul in the SoCal North and in the South we're having uh, some good results coming from some Orange County teams namely Fullerton Disciples uh, and then we have SoCal Troop out of Cyprus and Anaheim Legacy that are that are doing well followed by California Rush who are all 3-0 and but the, those top three teams are from the northern uh, Orange County area so um, yeah, if they if they keep that up, we may see them back at, in the premiere. Uh, speaking of SoCal Troop and Anaheim Legacy. So out of all the teams that you've been naming out, there has to be at least one team or even a couple of teams that could be a surprise team or even a standout team this year. What would you say would be those teams or team? Well, certainly, at least at this point, this early on, the new team, Alta California Sol, out of the Santa Barbara area, I believe, they are doing well already they're three and oh so com it's common for teams to come in and struggle a bit when they just are, are launching but this team is doing well already uh, so that's something to watch out for and in the southern part uh, I think again Fullerton Disciples who's on top of the division is is at the moment the better team so that's something to watch out for as well so you mentioned sometimes teams come in they struggle yeah disciples was one of those teams last year yes and now they're having success this year how do you attribute that to something what do you see from disciples that has seen them get out to a good start i think it may be due to continuity i'm not too familiar with fullerton disciples but given that they've had time in the league now and they're gelling my educated guess is that they're having continuity perhaps it's players that are returning and that they're starting to gel and they're starting to form a chemistry i think that could be one of the factors and it's it's 
I'm looking at the the standings and they're up 15 goals uh, to one goal against. So they have a, a differential of 14 goals, uh, similarly to SoCal Troop. So they're doing well. So I wanted to bring back uh, Alta California Soul. Um, what's working for them? They're coming in, they're 3-0 and already, and they look really good, and they're a really hot team. What do you see that's working for them? I believe they are an established club already. They have a youth mm -hmm. system. That's correct. And I think that could be playing a big factor in having a style of play, bringing their players up together with the style of play. Um, I think that's probably what's doing it for them. It is probably pretty abnormal that a brand new team comes in and is 3-0 and already. So they are sort of bucking that trend, uh, but it does have to do with their structure and the foundation that's already been set there. So yeah, I think you're correct in, in attributing their success to having a foundation. So what's going on with uh, Anaheim Legacy and the SoCal Troop right now? I know you were having this discussion before the show, but uh, would you be able to explain what's going on between these two clubs? Well, SoCal Troop, I've been keeping up with um, on social media, and they have a pretty good social media game. And with Anaheim, uh, they were also part of the recent announcement with LA Wolves mm -hmm. and Orange County Soccer Club. They're also part of that uh, affiliation. So I think they're attracting, perhaps they're starting to attract the players to get eyeballs or to get um, Orange County Soccer Club's uh, scouts <clears throat> excuse me interested in them and so i think that's one of the main things happening for anaheim legacy and as far as oc and la have we been seeing a better oc side of things or a better la side or has it been pretty neutral as far as these two well currently it's a it seems a bit lopsided or with uh, the orange county side where you have these three central northern county teams um jumping up to the top and you have um two other teams that are struggling uh, namely newport newport fc mm -hmm. and oc real force formerly Cachorros out of, out of Santa Ana and they're 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 struggling right now but uh, the I think one of the standout issues here is how these three county teams Northern County Orange County teams are are doing well so far so do you already have a do you already think a team is gonna come up top or anything which team is like I should say I should reward my question but who is the standout team here in SoCal? Right now, we are seeing Cal FC after only two games, but and it's a bit early. But they're again starting with they're picking up where they left off. Right, they've got something like a another 14 goal differential or something. They've got I think 15 goals scored and maybe only one against. And it looks like Richie Men Menjivar is back playing for them again. Okay. Right. So. Already, they're looking like uh, one of the top teams. I know this is pretty early on in the season, but mm -hmm. do you have any predictions going further or anything? I, I expect another um, competition between the Wolves and Cal FC for that top spot in the north. And I think in the south, we'll see maybe Santa Ana get their bearings again. They had a, a loss over the weekend over uh, Inland Empire, who could end up being another surprise, perhaps, mm -hmm. for for that division. Uh, so they may be fighting for a top spot. Um, Were you at that game? I wasn't at that game. Okay. At, uh, I'll hold my question. <laughs> uh, I do want to know about the the rush of Inland Empire teams that have, you know, had success in the last, you know, season, especially with City Legends mm -hmm. and in the Empire, both mm -hmm. gaining promotion. What do you think that means to have some Inland Empire teams sort of challenging now in the UPSL SoCal division? Well, it speaks to the level of talent and quality that there is there, um, which is unquestionably has been there for a while in, in teams like Moreno Valley, who was mm -hmm. in the league a while back, and they're one of the best teams in the region. Um, and they, they won USASA Region 4. That's right. Out of Union Empire. So. I think that was 2016. Yeah. yeah. 
I just have one final question. Sure. Uh, I just want to say, can you tell the people about what kind of talent SoCal has, what kind of players you've seen so far? Well, who am I to say? I, I mean, so many people come to that conclusion around the country that SoCal has some of the best talent in the country. It could form its own national team. Its own, we won't call it a national team, but at least a regional powerhouse of a team with uh, abundant talent, as we said, in Inland Empire. LA, of course, Orange County, it's, it's almost, it's never lacking. Mm -hmm. So you like Cal FC to, to win this spring season in the Western Conference? I think it's a bit early to tell, but I won't be surprised if they're fighting. Uh, well, certainly I think their, their division, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be fighting for, but beyond that, they'll probably a pecking, pecking there. Okay. The okay. whole thing. Omar, thank you so much for being a part of the show. We really appreciate you stopping by. Uh, that was Omar Avalos, always getting into the SoCal soccer news. But when we come back, we're going to have our final thoughts and say our final goodbyes. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. That is at UPSL Soccer. And welcome back to Inside the UPSL, presented by TV Emacs. We're going to bring in our final thoughts here in the show. But, Dennis, you know, the last time we had the show, you were talking to us about, you know, CIF uh, soccer, I should say. Now we moved on from soccer, and now you're covering CIF basketball? Uh, basketball is almost finished. State championships are this weekend in Sacramento. I won't be making the trip this year, although I've done it before. Uh, soccer did finish this past weekend. Um, Southern California just wrapped up its high school soccer season with its SoCal Regional Championships. Uh, the team I was covering out of Riverside, Arlington High School, they made it to the semifinal of SoCal Regionals before losing. Uh, and then they beat the team that ended up winning the SoCal Regional in the um, Division II Championship game. So what happens is um, every division has two or three or four teams that qualify for the SoCal Regional in that division. And so you'll see teams that lose in the quarterfinals or semifinals come back and win again in the SoCal Regionals. And that's what happened this year. Uh, Long Beach Cabrillo, uh, they lost to Riverside Arlington 1-0 in the championship game. And then they came back and now they've won the, the Division Two SoCal Regional. And that's just the kind of wacky stuff that happens in CIF. It sounds really complicating. I remember CIF being so complicating, having to wait. I remember for high school football, you'd mm -hmm. have to wait until like Sunday morning to get like the Division One schools and get to get that standing. Yeah. A, little, a little bit crazier on the CIF side. What's what's new for you, Are What final thoughts to the show? Well, that's a, it's a tough one, you know, just busy with all kinds of things and you know just looking forward to you know keeping up with uh, UPSL soccer and you know there's going to be some really exciting matches coming up uh, you know in the, in the coming weeks. Way to stay on brand. Good job. No problem. There we go and we got to wait for Dennis to come up with uh, news on the daily. Always new teams joining the league and always things going on on a regular basis here with the UPSL right? Stuff's always popping off. Things are always happening, but that's going to do it for us here in Inside the UPSL. We thank you so much for joining us tonight. Don't forget to follow us and keep stay up to date with all of your UPSL news. That is on Instagram, Facebook, even on Twitter, and that's at UPSL. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Alex Naveja. With me tonight was Dennis Pope and Art Eftkari. Hope you guys can join us next Thursday. Have a good night, folks.